Hello there, welcome back to Green Valley Zoo. Um, we are in episode 20. Can't believe I'm up to episode 20 already. And in this episode, um, I decided to put in um, a large seal enclosure. And as you can see, it's going to be a lake. Uh, now my thinking here, I I wanted to put some seals in. Um, I think the main reason I wanted to do another water creature was because the last episode I did the uh, the crocodiles, and I I don't know why I just fancy doing another water based creature, and I fancy doing seals because I love the seals. But what I didn't want to do was what you see in most zoos with seals, which is you know a small fake enclosure usually with you know some seating where people watch the seals do displays and stuff I don't like that that's not my thing you know I like to see animals in as natural an environment as possible so I wanted to make it quite a large natural enclosure as you can see it's the biggest enclosure that I've actually made in this zoo so far and there were a few requirements in my mind of what I wanted it to achieve. For start I wanted all the barriers to be natural. I didn't want to see any barrier um, fencing. So you can see here I immediately just make the whole thing with null fencing and then it means that I have to fill it all in later on. Uh, the other things that I wanted was an island which you can see I've put in the middle here. Um, I wanted that because I just thought for sight it would look cool but I, I wanted the seals to have somewhere uh, away from people um, where they could go on their own. I also as you can see wanted a nice walkway right through the middle of the enclosure so that's in and I wanted a few exits from that because it allows me to then build onto it and expand the zoo sideways so uh, the path is in already and the other thing I wanted, and I wanted, this had to be um, right over on the left as you're looking at it now, near the modern art garden, I wanted a, a nice beach area, which would be the main area where the seals come out and spend their relaxing time. And it was where I would put all the enrichment items. And I just got going basically, that was my plan. Um, obviously there's an awful lot of landscaping in the episode. Lots of taking the uh, the water on uh, in and out and uh, making sure that the seals can get everywhere that I wanted them to. Uh, just put the one seal in first. I do actually end up putting another 20 seals in here which I know is too many um, for the game as in they don't like having that many together but for this size habitat you really need that many um, so that it fills it up basically otherwise you'd never actually see any seals uh, that was my thinking anyway um, like I said I've, I've got the welfare turned off so it's not going to upset them in any way they're going to be fine with it um, you know I'm, I'm more about the look of the habitats than actually making it perfect for the animal uh, even though I do try to, to be as realistic as possible, uh, which this is, you, you really would get a lot of seals. I mean, in the wild, you see seals in huge numbers. So there's really not a lot of logic to the game thinking that they don't want more than eight of them together. When actually, in reality, you, you find colonies of seals hundreds, if not thousands strong. So, yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with having as many as I put in. I think 21 altogether. So you can see here I'm starting on the natural um, barrier for the habitat. Uh, I, I, again, I'm using this technique of creating a, an area like this and then doing a bit of copying and pasting. Uh, a couple of different rocks I, I thought I wanted to put in here. I didn't want it all to be the same color, so I thought I'd just blend these two different colored rocks together. Um, it's the first time I've, I've done that actually, and I, I think it works quite nicely. It's quite a subtle change. And then I, I literally just copy and paste this around. You blend bits together, you sink some in more than others, turn them around a bit sometimes. And in the end, once you then uh, layer it with foliage as well, you don't realize that you've just copied and pasted the whole thing. 
so it works absolutely fine and it's certainly the, the easiest and quickest way of doing a large natural barrier like this um, see they're just flipping bits around and you know go back and just add bits in here and there and it's uh, yeah it ends up all looking very different and natural um, so yeah really happy with uh, with how this enclosure came out this is probably actually my I probably say this in most episodes but so v so far I think this is probably my favorite uh, certainly my favorite habitat to build I actually had most fun constructing it I think because it is so big and so natural um, being a, a gardener myself I, I enjoy this sort of environment without all the, the big solid wooden structures or anything I, I like uh, the natural look of an area like this certainly if I was a, a billionaire who owned a zoo this is the sort of enclosure that I would want to build for my animals and you can see I was trying to incorporate uh, this door into a sort of a, a rock wall um, but actually it doesn't work I found I had to change it in the end because if the seals were brought in and dumped the rocks were too close and the seals couldn't actually walk forwards into the enclosure which is a bit silly really but uh, that's the way the game works uh, so I did have to change that a little bit which you won't see in the time lapse I don't think I think uh, I did that off camera so I'll show you that in the real time bit um, so here you can see just filling in the gaps basically that was how this enclosure needed to work I just had to go all the way around the edge and think right what's going to look good in this bit and how do I fill this gap in and most of the time it was just rock work certainly around uh, this edge here all around the back um, there is a bit where the beach is that I didn't want it to be rocks um, so you can see the beach here uh, I wanted to put a fence in here because of the path being here I just I didn't want rocks it just wouldn't have looked right so I make a little custom fence here and uh, just copy and paste and move it all the way along this path uh, most of which I did off camera again uh, because it's very repetitive and time consuming and you don't need to see me doing it all but you you get to see my uh, my logic and my thinking of the fence um, it's always tricky trying to come up with new ideas for fencing you know new materials or new look for a fence uh, so in this case I just used two different types of wood um, I thought being a beach I wanted it to be wood no I didn't want metal I didn't want stone I wanted it to be wood and I hadn't used these two pieces together before and I think they worked out very nicely uh, back to a bit more rock work as well along this side uh, I, th I think it looks good having the edges with these um, these large flat pieces I know technically I could go down in the water and continue them underwater but I just don't think there's a need in it in a big enclosure like this I haven't worried about doing work in the water because it's it the water is an open for viewing um, so I didn't see a lot of point in just spending ages putting lots of plants and things in the water and just quite frankly slowing my computer down by doing that uh, it seems a bit pointless so I haven't done that uh, they have got some enrichment in the water they've got some of the feeding stations but other than that there's nothing going on in the water at all um, it's just left bare um, yeah that's my that was my decision and uh, yeah I'm sticking with it I really wanted to worry about just getting the uh, the land and the beach areas looking good so you can see here just the, the usual technique of just scattering a few of these uh, rubble piles along the edges it uh, it really just blends things together nicely it makes it look so natural it's exactly what beaches and uh, you know if you get rock walls in real life um, they crumble and that's so that's exactly what these little pieces do it just makes it all look very natural and aged yeah, really is such a, a, a diverse piece to use this one I wanted uh, I wanted some of these beaches to be accessible certainly this one over on the side here so I didn't want to block it completely uh, but I made sure that along right along the back of the habitat near the actual border for the zoo I made sure that none of that beach was usable 
because I didn't want the seals sitting back there I want the seals either on this side piece where you can see them from the elevated walkway or on the main beach at the front where most of the pathing is you know in a, in a, in a, in a habitat like this that's this big you uh, you would have to try and encourage the animals to go where the public can see them as well as providing them obviously somewhere to go where they can get away and be in private but obviously people pay their money to come and see animals and if they don't get to see them they're not going to come back so most of the the back area as you as you're looking at it now um, isn't usable certainly around the the right hand side and around the um the habitat entrance gate that is usable and of course they've got the island in the middle uh, so now i wanted to decorate the um the beach a bit and i had the idea here of just putting a sort of a you know fake shipwreck in here and yeah i, like, I quite like these pieces I'd, li I'd actually like to have more i know in uh, in planet coaster they provided us with an actual front and back half of an entire ship which i think would look quite cool even in a, a zoo environment i think you can get away with that sort of thing if the enclosure is the right type um, but as it is we've just got these pieces which are great pieces um, they're very diverse because you can use them for all sorts of other things as well um, which obviously i have i use them in the modern art garden and i think i used them possibly in the very first episode in my entrance building i may have used them possibly i can't remember i know i have used them in buildings before as uh, sort of canopies so yeah so again very simple work here really just some rocks and some ferns um, decide to put some some palm trees down make it look like a proper desert island um, i think that works quite nicely it doesn't take a lot with areas like this because you don't want to fill it up too much you don't want it to look crowded but you want it to look real and natural and you want to break up the sand just a little bit so just a few piles of rocks a few trees a few little plants and then leave most of it open because uh, there's a lot of animals here and they they need to be able to to walk around most of the area um, so you can see here just again just just placing a few simple ferns down a few rocks and obviously i do put a load of the enrichment items uh, on this beach to encourage them over although conveniently the um when the guys come in and put their food down they do put a lot of it on this beach which is good i found these canoes uh, i thought they looked really nice so i thought there's no harm in having a couple of them down it could be that those are the boats that um, the zookeepers would actually use to get over to the island i thought i'd put this one over here as well make it look like it's actually sunk in the water a bit maybe that's an old one that's uh, not used anymore and they've just left it there I had to move this piece because it was blocking them from actually walking through the middle i wanted them to be able to go through the middle uh, just delete a couple of rocks and that sorted that out so yeah the foliage around the outside um, which i think is what we'll be moving on to in a minute i really wanted it to look full very dense again it's my my technique of layering so you just start with the plant, you work your way around, you plonk it down. Then you move on to your next plant and you go back and you do all the way around it again. And you just keep on going until eventually you, you get to the stage where you think you put enough down and it, it looks good. It looks full up, but not crowded. You know, you don't want it to look messy. So obviously I wanted these palm trees to continue the, uh, the theme of uh, sort of a tropical area. So are you... Are you I start with the big ones basically, plonk them down, and then I move to the medium sized ones and add some of them down, then I do the smaller ones. That, uh, I think that was all the trees, certainly the big trees that I use. Then you go on to the smaller ones and then you try and find another type of palm which will look good. Uh, you don't want too many different types of the same thing, so you wouldn't want three, four, five different types of palm tree in an area like this the most i would personally use would be two but the, you can then use variants of each of those two which is what i do i think any more than that and it it, it wouldn't look right it would look crowded um, but i think you can get away with, with two so you can see i use this smaller one here uh, what is this one the Aust uh, australian fan palm this one 
Uh, I love these. I think they look fantastic. So again, I, I start with the biggest one and I just work my way around and space them out. Nice and random. You know, you don't want it to look too mechanical, too, you know, you, you know um, what's the word I'm looking for? Monotonous. So you've got to keep it random, different heights, move some forwards, move some backwards, you know, place two right next to each other, then leave a big gap before the next one, that sort of thing. And I know I'm probably telling you stuff you already know, but, you know, for the sake of anyone who's not done this, maybe they're, they're going to try this sort of thing. These, these little ideas, little hints and tips, uh, hopefully will help. Um, so I, I apologize if you already know what I'm talking about, but I'm, uh, I'm always going to talk and explain what I do just in case people don't uh, don't quite understand my my methods and of course I'm not saying that I'm right and anyone else is wrong this is just how I like to do stuff and it seems to work for me I'm as long as I'm happy with with what I create um, you know that's what matters hopefully you like it as well but obviously we play these games for our own pleasure at the end of the day um, so yeah, so I will always explain my workings. Here again, I want it, I love these ferns. They um, they're a very simple thing. They look good in a lot of different environments. Same as the bracken, but I didn't want to use bracken here. I only wanted these nice big leafed plants, nice tropical looking things. So again, just completely randomly plonking these down. Some on the rocks, some on the beach, and um, again, it's just layer upon layer. You just keep on going, and it. In the end, I I know I've said before that I didn't want to keep using the tamarind tree to add colour to areas like this, um, but I do. Uh, you'll see that off camera. Uh, I did that, so you'll see that in the real time bit. Here, I wanted some normal foliage in here, not just the uh, the big leaf tropical stuff. I wanted some of this basic green stuff just to look like there's something climbing all over the rocks, and and it's a it's a darker green as well, so it. It helps to highlight the lighter green of the uh, the palms. Um, so yes, yeah, so just again, you can see I'm just raising bits up, sticking them higher up, lower down. It you know you can get away with it. You really can. It it works. Um, it's a very simple idea, but uh, you really can just place them sticking out the side of the rocks, and it looks very natural. Uh, so we're just getting to the end of the time lapse. There's quite a lot extra to show you in the real time bit. Um, but uh, for now, I will bid you farewell, but we'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, and here we are back with our seals. This one just hovering in the air a little bit there. <laughs> the animation on these things is wonderful, isn't it? Oh, look, he's going to go for a swim. Look at that. It's so realistic. It's fantastic. And off he goes away into the water for a swim with his friends right so let me let me get stuck in um, lots to show you here there's been quite a few changes uh, well not changes but additions anyway um, for start this is the central island so let's talk about this first um, I did have an idea on here of putting a shelter and I built one and uh, I didn't like it and, and I sort of thought well, they really don't need a shelter. Um, there's so much foliage around. Um, the requirements for hard shelter were met anyway. So I don't think they actually need anywhere indoors to go. I guess they can shelter underneath the walkway. I guess that, that can count as shelter even though it's over the water. Um, so really with this, I just would, obviously I wanted to keep the two entrance bits clear. Where they can come on and off of the island. And then around the end, uh, I just wanted... Uh, to essentially duplicate what I've done around the outside. So the same rocks, the same trees. I did put these at different tree ferns on actually, which I didn't use on the outside. I used them instead of the other palms. And um, yeah, I think they work nicely here. I just wanted that little bit of variation. Uh, so I did that on both sides. And that's the island, you know, a few palm trees, really simple. Uh, but I didn't want to clog it up, I wanted it quite open because they do come up on here a lot and uh, and bask. So I didn't want it to be too busy um, and I wanted it to be able to be seen as well from the walkway and um, from further back here. Um, so this is now the beach. I think you saw most of this on the time lapse. I have put some um, 
enrichment up on here. Uh, there's a, a sprinkler, a couple of footballs, and a couple of these big, um, you know, I don't know what are these called, skittles? Yeah, snowman skittle and and, uh, and a normal one over there. Uh, put some education boards down. These I copied from the last video over by the crocodiles, and obviously just changed the animal. Uh, I really like what I've done with this actually it's uh, it was such a quick simple thing it took me about 30 seconds to build that but actually I think it looks really nice so I'm probably going to continue using these where they're appropriate um, along here I have added some more trees in at this end just to break up the skyline a bit so when you're you know when you're looking from back here it's nice to have some trees in the foreground as well as in the distance um, another education board there and another one here put some benches down as well here you know this would be a lovely spot wouldn't it just to to sit down here and uh, have a view out over the water uh, did also put some benches here behind the beach uh, as you can see the seals come right up on the beach here so sitting down here and having your lunch would be lovely because you're so close to them I mean you could even lean over and, and touch them probably um, yeah I'm really pleased with how this beach came out actually um, I'd love to visit this Sue. it'd be great wouldn't it <laughs> um, <laughs> so I blow my own trumpet a bit there but I think I'm building a really nice zoo um, right what else has changed not too much um, I managed to get some of the, a couple of these pontoon things in the water they could be quite tricky they need an awful lot of room around the enclosures uh, sorry around themselves within the enclosure to actually function um, so you need quite a big body of water. Luckily, I, uh, there is enough here. Um, I just noticed an alert. Habitat cleanliness is a disease risk. Who's not cleaning the capuchin monkeys? Hmm. That's mysterious. You're meant to be getting checked every month. I need more mechanics. Bear with me. I'm just going to hire some mechanics while I think about it. Because if I don't, I will forget. Here we go, let's get four more mechanics down and they can go about their jobs. Come on guys, get to work. Right, now where were we? Seals, here we go. So, uh, this I had this little corner here, not too sure that's finished yet. I just I continued the, the rock work on the front. Um, I liked these, these barriers. Uh, now I'll explain my reasoning behind these metal barriers. Um, in a second. I just filled it up with this matting for now. I may put something else in here, maybe a statue or something, I'm not too sure yet. Uh, now what I was thinking of, because these barriers don't really suit this area or indeed this one, uh, but what I'm thinking is that maybe originally it, there was nothing here and then they found that people were starting to walk over here or maybe over this side they were starting to climb on these rocks uh, and so they've had to add these barriers almost as maybe like a, a temporary measure uh, until they can erect some nice wooden ones or something so that, that was my thinking uh, I just wanted to use something a bit different and I quite like these wooden barriers so there we go they're there um, you can make up your own reasoning why they're there but uh, they are over here uh, this is all new so this is what I've done with the uh, the zookeepers hut is in there um, again very simple building um, just yeah it is it is what it is really uh, stone and this red roof which I used in the last building over by the crocodiles that I built and um, I really liked it so I just thought I'd use that again a couple of different windows and you know this made this little porch out the front um, no not porch veranda that's what it is so yeah again really simple edging on the pathway leading to the back uh, this bit did have to change uh, I think I mentioned this before the rocks on each side of this doorway were making this entrance too narrow and the animals were coming in in their boxes just here but they weren't able to then walk away over here so I've had to remove the rock so I just I just put these little stone walls on each side and uh, actually I think it looks really nice so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm okay that I had to do that the greenery around the outside like I said before it was very good and very green and that was the problem I wanted some color uh, and so I did unfortunately go back to my old technique of sinking in the tamarind trees along here um, again it, it you know it works and if it ain't broke don't fix it 
Um, so I, I think uh, I'm, I'm okay with me doing this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. I think it looks really nice. Uh, I think all of this edge actually does look nice. It looks really natural. You can't tell that I copy and pasted a lot of the rock work because it's so hidden behind all the foliage. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with how all of that came out. Uh, and the walkway didn't have to do too much to that. Just some lights some benches and some bins. Um, I've got an entrance over here, which obviously doesn't go anywhere yet, but eventually the zoo will continue over here. So I wanted to make sure I got that in now. Uh, and then you just got the entrance here to the end of the garden area over here. And obviously this one that links down to where the warthogs are. Um, so let's get a nice overview. You see it's a huge area. Um, certainly the biggest bit of the zoo that I've done so far. And I have got a lot of seals. I've got 21 seals in here, I think. Um, but I think it's a good number. I know they, they're not happy. Technically, the game isn't happy, but I'm happy, and that's what matters. And the seals are happy. Look at them. I mean, um, yeah, they, they get around. They, they've got plenty of swimming space. They've got plenty of land space. They've got lots to keep them interested. And um, from a public point of view, there's there's lots of different ways that you can view the animals as well. Um, which is very important in uh, in all habitats. So yeah, I'm I'm chuffed with this. I think this has worked out really nicely. In fact, my next video and next habitat is going to be something similar to this over on the other side of the zoo, back where the crocodiles were. And I think it's going to be another large water feature. I'm not going to tell you what's going in it. So you'll have to tune in for that. Um, but yeah, for now. Let's leave it there. Actually, let's just zoom out. So there we go. Nice overview of the whole zoo there. It's filling out, isn't it? We're getting there. Still a lot more to do. I'll, I'll keep going for as long as my computer can still operate. Uh, but yeah, the next zoo is going to be up in this top corner here. Uh, the next zoo, the next uh, habitat, sorry, is going to be over here. Uh, I think that's my plan. And in fact, I may then do another water one in here. I, I really like this water look uh, really fills out the big gaps and it's it's a way of spreading your zoo out without clogging it up with lots of small habitats um, and it makes the whole thing look much more natural as well like you know like there were some natural lakes here already and the zoo has been built around them so yes I think I may do one up here um, and then maybe another one here I'll have to have a look at the animals though and see exactly what animals we've got that are suitable. Um, yeah, we'll see. But for now, uh, I think that will do. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate you giving me your time and attention. Uh, I hope I haven't waffled on too much. I'm sure I probably have. Um, I can't help it. I just get a bit carried away. Okay. Thank you, and um, hopefully I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, take care, and goodbye for now.